My great uncle, Sidney Edelstein, lived with his parents and his three siblings. Sylvia, who had become my grandmother, and his brothers Jake and Joel, at 36 East 51st Street in Brownsville, Brooklyn. Sidney attended Samuel J. Tilden High School and graduated in June 1940. Germany invaded Poland on September 1st, 1939 which was the start of the Second World War, but the United States did not yet join in the hostilities. On September 16, 1940, America instituted a national draft into the armed forces of all men aged 20, 21 through 35. Sid's older brother, Jake, was drafted into the army at 23. Sid was 18 at the time, so he was not drafted. On December 7, 1941, the Japanese Navy and Air Force staged a surprise attack on American forces in Pearl Harbor, and Americans were shocked. The next day, President Roosevelt made an urgent announcement over the radio, announcing that America was responding Jap to Japanese act of war by declaring war on Japan. Germany responded on December 11, 1941, by declaring war on the United States. The Second World War, in less than 30 years, had begun for the United States. Yesterday, December 7, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. One year later, in 1942, Sid received a letter informing him that he was required to join the U.S. Army in World War II. The Adelsteins were terrified because now they were going to have two sons entering into war zones with a grave chance of surviving. Sid was sent to Fort Dix, New Jersey, an army training camp and staging camp, where he stayed for 30 days along with 30,000 other men coming and going. Once Sid's training ended, he boarded a ship along with many other soldiers, where he was taken to Australia. Sid served in the Southwest Pacific Theater of War. He served in the 5th Air Force, 8th Fighter Group, 80th Fighter Squadron. The squadron consisted of 300 soldiers, with about 35 fighter pilots. The squadron leader was Captain, then Major, then General. J.T. Robbins. From Australia, the 8th Fighter Group was shipped to New Guinea. In New Guinea, Sid was assigned to be the crew chief in charge of maintenance of Major Robbins' P-38 plane. Through the war, Sid sent letters home using V-Mail or Victory Mail, the U.S. Army's mail system of microfilming letters that were then resized at the letter's destination. This saved valuable storage space on ships. Sid's squadron slowly began advancing north towards Japan. They first reached the Philippines, where the locals warmly greeted the U.S. soldiers as thanks for recently ending the Japanese rule there. In the Philippines, Sid witnessed a very unfortunate event. His sister, Sylvia, was engaged to an American soldier from Brooklyn named Lou Cohen. Lou was in the same squadron as Sid. Lou was working on the runway, and as the B-17 bombers were taking off, they kicked up a lot of dust that fogged the air. The pilot in one of the planes was not able to see Lou, as the planes, and as the planes took off, the plane's propeller hit Lou. He was killed instantly. The squadron soon advanced further to Okinawa and then to Ayashima. On the journey to Ayashima, the U.S. fleet was ambushed from the sky. Sid said, I was on an aircraft carrier advancing north in the Pacific. Kamikaze planes were sighted in the distance, and as the planes got in range, we began firing at them. Suddenly, a Japanese plane swooped in from above and dove straight at us. The plane smashed into the U.S. carrier next to us and exploded on the deck. Thankfully, the, the ship didn't sink, but it was badly damaged. 
At the time, I was in a state of shock. I couldn't understand what crazy individual would give up his life like that. I never thought I would see anything like it again, but unfortunately, we have seen suicide bombings become terrifyingly frequent. On August 5th, 1945, an hour and a half away by plane from Japan, the 8th Fighter Group was preparing for the largest operation of the Pacific War, Operation Downfall, the invasion of Japan. Sid said, We were getting ready to invade Japan. We had been planning this since October 1944, but I was very worried because I knew that many of my friends would die. In the afternoon we heard that we had bombed Hiroshima with an enormous nuclear bomb. Japan surrendered on September 2, 1945, and the war was over. We were so relieved and it felt wonderful to be able to go home. I never had second thoughts about dropping the nuclear bomb because we avoided the invasion and many more battles. A few months after the war ended, Sid was sent home. He reunited with his brothers after three years at war. Jake, who fought in North Africa and Italy during the war, and Joel, who was on a ship to the Pacific when the nuclear bomb was dropped.